Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about Time Machine and backing up your server. Uh, we've set up a lot of things on your server so far in this series and one of the things we don't want to do is have to start all over if we don't have to and so one of the ways to avoid that is to set up your uh, backups. Now first what I'm going to do is cover the Time Machine backup service uh, which allows you to back up other clients on your network uh, through Time Machine and then we'll talk about how you do this with your own server and what some of the best case uh, backups would be uh, to keep your server safe. So uh, the first thing you'll see is when we come into the Time Machine panel here, like many of our services in the server app, it's pretty simple uh, to set up a pretty simple interface. Uh, you've got the big on off button. As you can see for me, it's on right now. And then you have backup destination. Now, if you haven't set this up, it won't say there's a backup destination. It'll ask you to choose. And you literally just click this edit button right here and you go and you find uh, the disk that you want to use to do your backup. Now, a uh, couple of things to understand. You're going to get this uh, warning uh, sign here. I think this is kind of Apple's way of uh, just kind of uh, covering their own tracks, uh, so to speak. It just basically is saying, hey, look, just make sure that your particular device is connected to your server, that your server is always on, so that these backups can happen, um, so that uh, you don't have a drive that shuts itself off, or that just happens to be on the network, but it's not connected to the server. There's a few things, and you can get more information just by clicking the link there, and they'll talk about different drives that are compatible, and more importantly, the ones that aren't. So what you do is just select your drive. Uh, in my case, it's just going to be the Drobo, and you click Use for Backups. I'm just going to click Cancel since I've done that, and it will fill in the information here. Then all you got to do is throw the service on and get the green light over here on the side, and now all of a sudden the Time Machine backup uh, is available. And it's available to your devices uh, that you've got out there uh, on the network. And so the great part about this is it allows you to do wireless backup uh, of your devices. So if you've got laptops in the home uh, and things like that, instead of having to plug them into an external drive or uh, you know have to uh, bring them back to the computer and plug them in somehow to make it happen, whether through an Ethernet cable or whatever, uh, you have the option now to have your Time Machine backups happen wirelessly just as you use your computer, just like you would if you're uh, using your desktop computer or using your server. So uh, so it's a really a, kind of a nice deal. So let me show you what it looks like from the client side now that we've set this up. So I've got a screen screen share going on with uh, one of my other computers here and I'm in the Time Machine uh, Preferences area. Uh, you can get there by going up to the little spinning wheel if you want and clicking Open Time Machine Preferences. That's one of the fastest ways to get there. And so it brings up this window and simply all you need to do is click Select Disk and you'll see that our backups are right here and you can see it as backup disks, available disks uh, and one of them was from a previous backup but you can see all you gotta do is select your backup disk right there and uh, say use disk. Now since I've already done that, the disk will show up here. And remember, it'll just show up as backups. Uh, that will be the name of the actual drive that you'll mount. And you'll notice the people uh, on this drive just indicates that it's a network drive. All you do then is throw the switch and then the backup would start just like it normally would with Time Machine. Now I'm going to leave that alone for a second and let me just put this down here because I want to show you uh, where it stores the information for the backup. I'm going to pull up a finder window here. And so here on in the sidebar, here's my Drobo that I'm putting the information on. And what happens is server will create a file that's a folder that says shared items. Inside that uh, folder, it creates a folder that says backups. And then in here, you'll have basically your backup. And so you can see here, I've got this sparse image right here. I've got this disk image. Uh, this, and you notice it's a sparse disk image. This is what the backup file looks like. Now you'll notice it's a little different than in Time Machine uh, because in Time Machine it's kind of just integrated into that system. You don't see these uh, these type of things because on network backups or over-the-air backups, Time Machine creates sparse image files. And so that information gets created here. And you would see more for the other computers and things that you set up if you've got multiple computers that are backing up using Time Machine over the air to your server. All right, so that's how that works. Very simple, works great. Uh, it's a great option uh, to have, especially if you've got multiple devices. and it's a very simple service to set up and it works pretty cleanly. 
Um, so let me uh, let me put this down here for a second. So that takes care of your Time Machine backups. Now you're saying, well, what about my server? If I want to back up my server with Time Machine, well, if you want to back your server up with Time Machine, basically what you have to do is just uh, connect a drive and back up to that drive. So you do it exactly the same way. Uh, if I come up here on my window, I'm going to click uh, Open Time Machine Preferences and let the Preference window open up. And basically what's going to happen is is it's just as if you attached another drive. And so you can see here, if I want, I've got the same Drobo. You'll notice instead of a network drive, it shows a Time Machine drive. You just select the disk and then you throw the switch and the backups will happen. All right, now that'll, that'll give you a Time Machine uh, backup. Now, a lot, you can usually, what I would recommend with that is just do that to a separate drive uh, that you have dedicated just for Time Machine because as you know, Time Machine will take up as much space as you give it. And so it creates these big backups. Um, now, if you don't want to mess or hassle with the big backups, uh, there is a, a program out there uh, that Drobo uses that you can use called Time Tamer. Okay, and so what Time Tamer does is it asks you where you want to back up. You choose a folder that you want to back up your files to. And so you can, you know, kind of choose whatever. You could choose server backup or whatever. And once you click choose, what it does is it asks you how big you want to make your time machine backup. So how big do you want it to be? Uh, and so what happens is you can limit your disk size using this and say, hey, I only want it to be 500 gigabytes or whatever. What I usually would recommend is do double and a half, uh, double and a half at least of your uh, internal drive that you have your server on. So if you've got 500, uh, I would recommend that you double it. I'm sorry, not double and a half, but double it. So I'd say one, you know, go 1.5 terabytes, something like that, which gives you uh, plenty of time, a lot of months of backup, but doesn't take up all of the space. So that will happen is it'll it'll tell Time Machine that you only have a 1.5 terabyte terabyte drive and it will limit your backups. So you can put whatever you want in there. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I just wanted to show you that that's available and you can get that off of uh, Drobo's site. Uh, I'll try to include a link here uh, so you can go and do that in the notes. All right. So let me cancel that because I don't want to set that up. So that's one way you can do it if you want to do your server by time machine. Now what I would recommend however is I would recommend that you create a bootable clone. Uh, especially if your server is critical to you. One of the fastest ways to get restored is if you've got a, a bootable clone of your server so that if your drive goes down you can just boot from that from that clone and everything is back and running and your server's in good shape and you could restore a lot easier to a new drive. So let me pop this down here and what I'm going to do is pull up uh, a, a program called Super Duper. Now you can use uh, any program you want to use. Uh, there's a Carbon Cloner, there's different things like that. Uh, I prefer Super Duper. It's been great for me. It's been solid. I haven't had any problems with it. And Super Duper is a really simple program. Um, I've got another tutorial in my series on Super Duper if you want to check that out on how to uh, back up multiple drives to one drive. Um, but let me just walk you through this uh, quickly just so you get the idea. Uh, in this interface, you would just go copy and you would select, let's say, your Drobo, um, not your Drobo, your server hard drive, your main hard drive, and say, that I want to back that one up. And then you would click where you want to back it up to. And so uh, in my case, uh, let's say I want to back it up to the Drobo. Now, and you would select that. Now, what I've done here is I've got a second hard drive uh, in my server, and what I'm doing is backing that hard drive up to a disk image that got created on my Drobo. All right, so that's how that works. Very simple. I'm going to copy this drive to the other. Then uh, you can use uh, various things on here, little backup scripts and things. I would just say backup all files so that you don't have to worry about it. So you want to backup everything. Now, if you click this options button down here, uh, you have other options that you can choose. Now, what you want to do is you want to choose Smart Update. Okay, you want to choose that because what Smart Update does is it only backs up what changes. All right, so it's going to check it, and it's only going to back up the changes. It's not going to back up everything on your drive because you know that's a long process, and you don't want to have that running every single time Super Duper runs. All right, and so uh, I just set that up on Smart Update and click OK. Now, what you can do too is click this button, and you create a schedule. And so then you can just create a schedule of when you want your backups to happen, uh, how many days, what time you want it to happen, all of those kinds of things. And once you get that set up, I'm just going to click cancel here. Once you get that set up, then SuperDuper will automatically come on, 
run the copy and close itself down so that it almost kind of just runs there and you kind of know it's working but you don't have to worry about it and what it does like I said is it creates a bootable clone you could actually take that external drive if that's what you're booting to that's what I would recommend you could boot off that external drive and boot your computer as if everything was running and everything's fine because it makes an exact copy uh, including the boot boot drive part so this is what I would recommend you do it's one of the um, you know one of the best ways to make this this happen and get this running and I highly recommend recommend it. And you can do it for your other drives as well. But you want to have a bootable clone of your drive if you're going to back it up. All right. So let me close that down. Now there's one more uh, thing that you want to consider in backing up your uh, computer. And that is you want to, uh, you might want to back up your open directory. And so open directory is, has all of your user accounts, all of that information into it, a lot of your settings. And so if something goes wrong with your server, you might want to have a backup of that uh, open directory. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to go into Terminal. Let me pull up Terminal here. And you've got a Terminal uh, window here. And then what you're going to want to do is put in uh, a command to be able to backup your server. And you would type in sudo with a space and slap config. All right. That's one of the commands there with another space, dash backup db. And then you're going to put a space and you're going to put where you want to back this up. So you put the file path. So it's going to be root. It's going to, you know, so you're going to put just a slash, just basically the file path. And I'm going to put volumes, okay, drobo. And then I'm going to put it in a folder called server backups, okay, server backup. And then hit return. And then what it does is it asks you for, it says, okay, I'm going to put that in there. It'll normally ask you for your password. I'm already logged in, so it didn't. And so you'll notice that right here it says, okay, here's the archive time, the date, the time. It's going to make this backup. It's going to create it of my open directory. And then it asks me for an archive password so that if you, when you go to restore, it's going to ask you for this password. All right, so it uh, has some, um, it has some password protection on it. So put in whatever password you want. I'm going to put in a password right now. When I click return, you see now it's going through the entire process of creating this sparse image that's password protected of my open directory. All right, so it just got done creating that. You can see with all of the information and things that it did here. So let me just show you real quick where that uh, what that looks like. So if I open this up and you look in uh, you look in in my uh, information here, you'll see that uh, actually right here it stuck it right here in my Drobo. And there is the server sparse image that was created uh, today. And that's got my entire open directory in it. All right, so that that way, if anything goes wrong and all I need to do is restore the open directory, I've got that information. Like I said, passwords and those kinds of things. Let me pop that down for a minute and let me show you. Uh, if you were to have to restore that, okay, and you wanted to restore it, you would use the exact same uh, commands that we did before. Okay, so you would do you would do uh, sudo. Let me just click that there. Okay, and what you would do is let me just type it all out so you can see it on the screen. You would do sudo slap config again. All right, with a space, but instead of dash backup, you would put restore db. Okay, and then you know where you're restoring the db from, right? For me, it was volume drobo slash server backup. Now, if I hit return on that, it's going to ask me for my password that I just gave the uh, sparse image bundle that I just put in there in terminal and then it will then restore my uh, open directory master and put it right back where it was. All right, so that gives you kind of a, an overview of backup, and those are the options. I know in the previous, in Lion Server, you could back up your open directory uh, using the server admin application. We don't have that anymore, so you've got to get uh, into terminal a little bit, which I know can be intimidating, but hopefully that made it simple enough for you to understand how it works. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.